Welcome back to the airboat project. For today, the goal is to make the hoses and tubing to connect the radiator down there up to the engine. And to do this, I've gathered supplies. So I'll be using the, uh, the stock reservoir off the Chevy truck and uh, adapting some of that tubing. Uh, I have rubber hoses to adapt the uh, inch and a quarter to inch and a half. And then I have a bunch of inch and a half stainless tubing. So the stainless tubing I'll be welding together, connecting it to the engine with the rubber hoses. I have a bunch of these um, shrink connectors uh, that work pretty well. And I have also a bunch of uh, heater hose. I'll connect the heater as well. The heater I'm gonna use is this universal kit from Summit. It's basically a heater core and a 12 volt blower fan and uh, some mounting accessories. So just a generic thing. The reason I want a heater is because I do plan on using this in the winter and around here that means, you know, minus 20, minus 25. So I think the heater will be nice. I'll be using this uh, stainless tubing. This is 065 stainless steel tubing. And um, I'll be attaching the uh, rubber radiator hoses to this. So to do that I want to put a bead on this and uh, this is my new uh, Furic K2 tubing bead welder. I just made a video about this where I tried it out. So um, let's put it to use. As you can see, that puts a pretty nice bead in. So this tubing has a bead roll on either side and 90 degrees in the middle. I'll connect uh, these uh, radiator hoses to each end. To clamp the radiator hose to this tubing I'm going to use these shrink tubes. Um, I've used these before with a good result. They're, um, they cost more than a regular worm gear clamp but they, uh, they look nice and clean when they're on and uh, my experience with them is that they work really well. So we'll try them again. On the airboat, you know, it's gonna vibrate like crazy. It's one less screw that can loosen. So uh, we'll try it out. And it uses a heat gun to shrink. Okay, that should do it. So 
that should basically be a permanent thing. So obviously these aren't reusable. To, to take it off, you have to cut it with a blade. So hopefully I don't have to take that off. I'm making um, brackets out of the stainless tubing and this will uh, connect the radiator tubing to the engine stand. I've got one up in place already so there's um, I've welded these tabs onto the frames and then uh, these pieces are connecting the radiator tubing uh, to the engine stand so that'll be a rigid uh, so that'll go on basically like that. So I'm just going to tack it on right now with the TIG. I'll take it all off and then take it all. The radiator hoses are now fully connected and the tubing is all connected and uh, I think it looks really good. So it's very rigid, it's strong, so those are, the tubes are solidly, solidly mounted, of course the rubber will have a bit of flex and uh, I think that'll work really well. So the next part of this is uh, the heater hoses and the purge tank. For the reservoir, uh, just thinking about how it works, I'm pretty sure it needs to be at least as high as the engine, probably above it, or slightly above. So this is where I'm going to mount it. I made um, some aluminum brackets for it. This one under here, it bolts to the valve cover, and then another one in the back, just out of um, scrap aluminum. So I think that's where the reservoir will be. With um, this hose, it lines up pretty well to there. And then the heater hose, I'll put an extension under, run it all the way to the front. So it's not bad. The brackets are rigid. I am a bit concerned that with the vibration, this might shake too much. It's got a little bit of wiggle. So I might add another, like the factory is two point fixation at the front of the back. I might add another bracket to it just to make it a bit more rigid. But overall, that's where that will be. This is going to be the third bracket for the overflow reservoir. So here's the reservoir fully mounted. So this bracket, I just have it bolted to the manifold at the, uh, the bracket for the throttle cable. On the top, I just have some nylon straps. I might put a, a stainless hose clamp on there, but um, we'll see. The bracket is rigid. And the reservoir is, uh, it's pretty good now. That's pretty solid. So only one more thing to do to this. This is the heater core that I'm using. It's just a generic 
uh, universal heater core from Summit Racing. Uh, it comes with this, this cap will go on it, and then they sell uh, like a ducting kit, which uh, I'll probably just use it like this. I might put ducts on it later, we'll see. We'll see how well it works. So I plan on putting it underneath, under here. And uh, that way it should be out of my leg room and still hopefully uh, provide enough heat for for me and for the passengers. So that's basically right on the opposite side of this deck. The way this thing mounts up is there's these metal brackets that bolt like that. So what I'm going to do is basically it's going to be bolted on the underside of here. So worry about the darkness. I was um, thinking about building some brackets but I'm just gonna bolt it straight to the deck. I think that will be easier and save some time. There. So the heater is fully mounted. It looks good. That's nice and rigid. And uh, now I just have to run the heater hoses and uh, of course the wiring. It's hard to see under there, but I have the steam port connected. For that I used a quarter inch, and I actually used um, a fuel line just because I wanted something uh, pretty durable. It's probably overkill, but um, I was worried that a regular vacuum line type hose wouldn't be able to handle the heat. So that line runs all the way down, and the radiator is completely hooked up. So I have all the lines, the steam port vent, everything basically connected as it originally was in the truck. Okay, that's a wrap on the radiator hoses, cooling hoses, heater, heater hoses. Next on this project, I'll probably get into the computer and the electrical wiring. Thanks for watching.